What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple swimming AI. Now, I already did a flying AI video, which is actually gonna be very similar, but there's some different things that I want to add to this swimming tutorial, including different turn rates and also attacking. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new blueprint class. So let's go ahead and create a new blueprint class of type actor, as it will be placed in the world. Let's name this something as BP underscore swimming AI and open this up. All right, so the first thing that we want to add to our blueprint is going to be a skeletal mesh as we typically want a model, right? So let's go ahead and add this component. And now in the details panel, I'm going to change the asset into, in this case, a shark. And yes, I have imported this cool shark from Sketchfab, which is totally free. So I will link it in the description. Now, with that said, I want to add a simple animation for this. So I'm going to change the animation mode to an asset and just put the first one, which I think is this one, which should work. As you can see, it actually disappeared. Where is it? Well, this scale uh, seems that, you know, simply changed. So I'm going to just go ahead and put, you know, like 100. And I think that the scale should be back to normal. Let's drag it. And there we go. We are here. Now, of course, it's a bit too big, actually. <laughs> so let's put like maybe like 50 you know, reduce it by half. And yeah, I think that's actually going to work pretty well. And there we go. We have this, you know, shark in the air, which looks awesome. Now, of course, right now we need to make sure that it will have its AI. Now for this, we're going to be using a specific component, which is the projectile movement component. Now you're probably wondering why are we using this component if it's typically used for bullets and so on. Well, the thing is that this specific component has a really cool feature, which is the homing projectile. And this enables us to set a target and this AI will essentially, you know, follow this target in all directions. So it doesn't matter the gravity, right? We can disable it. So let's go and set up the first parameters that we need. So the first one's going to be the speed. Let's put something as, you know, 500 and 500. Then we're going to make sure that rotation falls velocity is enabled. That way our AI will turn. And then also set the gravity to be zero. As of course, we don't want our shark to fall. <laughs> and now let's go down and make sure that the homing projectile is enabled. This is very important because it's actually what, you know, will allow us to, you know, turn the shark. And then for the magnitude, let's put a thousand. And this is essentially the rotation speed. Now, maybe that's too quick for our AI. We'll see. Maybe let's actually drop it to 100 because, you know, swimming is going to be different to flying. It's going to be slower. So let's see. With that said, now there's only one thing left, which is to set the homing target. As you can see, when I press play, it's working, but it's going all in one direction, right? It doesn't go into my player. And that's because, you know, we didn't set a target. Now, first of all, the rotation is a bit wrong. So I'm going to just put a minus nine to be here. So it's facing the correct way. Okay. And now the mesh actually will go to the forward. Cool. With that said, now let's actually set the homing target. So for this, let's go to the events graph and on the begin play. So when the game starts, we will get the projectile movement component and set the homing target component. Now, in this case, we need to set, for example, the player, right? I mean, it can be anything really. So what I'm going to do is just get the player character and then just go ahead and cast to my blueprint, which in this case is the third person cast blueprint. Now, I can't directly just plug this in here because it's a scene component. So I need to get, you know, just a simple component from this blueprint. For example, I could get, let's say, the mesh. It doesn't really matter. We could get any component from here, but the mesh typically is a good reference. So let's plug this over here, plug this over here. And now you will see that if we actually go and press compile and press play, boom, our shark <laughs> will start to navigate into a, our player. And of course, right now, you know, it's trespassing all walls and everything because, you know, this environment is not built for this. So I'm going to make a very quick adjustment, okay, to my player, okay, over here, which is going to simply just be the default mode, okay, in the character movement, which will simply be flying, okay? That way I can go and start to fly, okay, as you can see. Um, but I need to also make a simple adjustment, which is on the movement input, right? So I simply need to go ahead and change the direction, which I'm simply moving. Okay. 
including the X row over here in the forward. That way I should be able to go up, but there's one thing left to change, which is also um, the pitch. All right, so now, as you can see, I can go up. Okay, and now we can actually see a bit better the AI follow me, which is really cool, right? So you can see that the AI will turn, you know, smoothly, right, into my player, which is very important. And this is mainly because of the projectile movement component uh, magnitude, okay? So the lower this is, the more swimming realistic it's going to be, essentially because it takes more time to turn. Now let's set up a sample attacking system, okay? So let's go, you know, back to our swimming AI. And on the event graph, I'm going to make a simple thing which is going to be a timer. So let's add this set timer by event node. And this node will enable us to execute a timer every couple of seconds. So let's create a new custom event, which in this case, let's call it like attack. And this will be binded. So we can now plug in what time, you know, interval we want to have for this loop. So for example, let's say that every 0.8 seconds, our shark will attack. Now, very important, we need to make sure that looping is on. With that said, now if I, for example, use plugging a print string and press play, you can see that every 0.8 seconds, a hello, you know, print will be appearing at the uh, top left of my screen. Now, of course, we don't want to print hello, we want to attack. So for this, let's go ahead and do a simple sphere trace by channel, okay? Uh, we can do it by channel or for object, and typically, depending on your case, you want to change it. In my case, I'm actually going to go with objects because it will enable me to find the player a bit easier. OK, but it's really the same thing. Now, for the tracer start and end, I'm simply going to just get the center of the actor. So the actor location. OK, and this will be the starting point. And then for the end point, I just simply want to get the actor rotation. OK, so we can use actor rotation. And then from the rotation, I want to get the forward vector as I want him to, you know, attack forwards, right? The trace. So with that said, I just need to multiply this by a value, which I can just right click and change to a float. So it's a nice number. And this is the distance that this trace, right? This invisible um, kind of sphere will go forward. So let's put something as, I don't know, 500. With that said, let's add these two vectors together to get the direction and plug that into the end. Cool. Let's put a radius like 25. And then very important, make sure that the object types is with a make array node and set to pawns as we want to detect pawns as typically, you know, characters are pawns in Unreal. And with that said, I want to put this to four duration so I can just preview the attacks. As you can see now, you know, let, let me just go a bit higher in the air. We can see how the shark is actually attacking, you know, 500 units forward every 0.8 seconds. And if I was inside, it turns green because you know it will be impacting me which is really cool now we need to make sure to add a branch here so we will only continue and deal damage if we have detected something and if so we will get the break here result of this and just apply damage to the hit actor so yes and has this really cool note to apply damage to put like 10. and with that said now the ai will also deal damage to my player of course i don't have a health system right now set up in my player but if i would have that you know system everything would connect and work which is really cool so that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it you could like the video and subscribe to my channel remember you have full access to the private files through patreon or you the members link is in the description yeah with that said uh join my discord server follow me on my socials and now yes with all said bye bye